In this video, I'm gonna share with you the one principle that has helped me write better songs more consistently and spend less time feeling frustrated and like a failure. Let's talk about it. So this core principle is really very simple, but also super powerful. And that is simply to reduce the friction at every step of the songwriting process. Or seen another way, make every step in the songwriting process easier. So before we talk about how to actually reduce the friction at every step, first I think it's important to talk about where does friction actually come from. And I think friction in the songwriting process largely comes from three different things. One is not getting specific enough about what specific specifically we are trying to accomplish or trying to write. Another is trying to do too much at the same time. And finally, lack of clarity in what to do next. So first let's talk about how to get more specific about what you're actually trying to write. Or seen in another way, simply making steps smaller and easier to accomplish. A mistake that I think a lot of us make is we will sit down to write a song and basically just say that, where we're like, I'm gonna write a song. But write a song is far too big of a process. We should break that down into smaller steps. I would even argue saying something like, I'm gonna take an hour and write the chorus for song X. Even that, I think, is too big of a step. We should get more and more specific. Like, I'm going to try to workshop the lyrics for the second verse of song X. That way, when we actually sit to write songs, we have a clear goal, and it's something that is actually doable in the 15 minutes, half an hour, or maybe be an hour that we have to work on songwriting. It would be overwhelming to say, okay, I'm gonna write a song when we only have half an hour to actually work on a song. But it's far more doable and has far less friction if we say, okay, I have 15 minutes, I'm going to work on editing my third verse lyrics for song X. In fact, I even separate out my idea gathering sessions and my normal songwriting sessions. That means that I never really sit down and say, okay, I don't have an idea for for a song, but I'm gonna come up with an idea for a song and develop it into a song. Instead, I might be like, I have half an hour. Let me just try to come up with song ideas. Probably the best idea I have ever had. And that might be me sitting at a keyboard or guitar coming up with musical ideas, or that might be me sitting in front of my computer, maybe doing some Google searches, looking up some images, and just generally thinking of some lyrical concepts or word-based concepts to use in a future song. Breaking our songwriting into such small steps helps to avoid the whole staring at a blank page thing. Because often writer's block comes from the overwhelm of asking ourselves to do too much. We stare at a blank page and say, write a song, which is basically saying, improvise poetry and music that all works together well, which is asking way too much of ourselves. But if instead we stare at a blank page and say, let's just write down any and all music or lyric ideas that we have, no matter how bad or good the idea seems, we just write it down and we just do that for a half hour or hour, however long we're working on songwriting that day. It's less overwhelming and has less friction because we aren't asking ourselves to come up with a great idea that's worthy of developing into a song. We're only asking ourselves to come up with ideas. And we're also not asking ourselves to do like 10 different songwriting steps. We're asking ourselves to do one, which is to simply gather ideas. And again, we can do this at every step of the songwriting process. Instead of saying, I'm gonna write first verse lyrics, which is fairly precise and far better than saying, I'm gonna sit down and write a song, we can break it down even further and say, I'm just gonna work on developing out the first verse lyrics, where I'm gonna just work on writing lyrics, do a bunch of different versions for the first verse. I'm not gonna edit those lyrics. I'm not gonna refine those lyrics. I'm just going to write. Because even something like writing versus editing should be separated out. Because when we're writing, the most healthy perspective to have is discovery and to really just say yes and to everything. We really don't want to have that editor portion of our brain that would say, no, that's a terrible idea. When we're writing, we want to treat this like a discovery process. We're not saying no to things. We're not saying, oh, what a terrible idea that is. That's not a good enough idea to write it down. We just write anything and everything. And then in the editing process, that's when it becomes valuable to actually Actually turn on our internal editor that says no bad idea or that needs to be refined that is useful in the editing process but it's not useful in the writing process so 
when we're sitting down, we shouldn't even say something like, we're gonna write the second verse lyrics for our song, because even that can be broken up into smaller, more doable steps, such as, okay, I'm gonna just work on writing it, where I write a bunch of different versions of it, versus say, I already have some second verse lyrics, and now I want to edit or refine those second verse lyrics into something that's actually good. The second way to reduce friction is to only work on one thing at a time. So not only is it important to break down our songwriting into small steps, but we want to make sure that we are only working on one step at the same time. Studies have shown that only 2.5% of people can multitask efficiently and effectively, and that shifting between different tasks can cost up to 40% of productive time. So don't try to do something like write your chords, melody, and lyrics all at the same time. In fact, don't even try to write your lyrics and melody at the same time or your melody and your chords at the same time. And maybe for you this is obvious, but a lot of people will do something like sit at their guitar, improvise a chord progression, and try to improvise a melody at the same time and try to improvise lyrics all at the same time. Now, once in a while, this may work out, but most of the time, this is just gonna make songwriting more frustrating than it has to be. Instead, you'd probably be better off if you just came up with a chord progression or a bass line or something musically that you think, oh, that's really cool. And then after you have an instrument part that you think is interesting, then maybe record it, even if it's on your phone, and just listen back to it. Don't even ask yourself to play that part that you just wrote, just listen back to it and try to improvise with your voice or with any other instrument a melody. And then once you have an instrument part that you think is really awesome and worthy of building into a song, then actually record that part. And before you say, Joseph, I don't have any expensive recording equipment. That doesn't matter. You don't need to actually record this into your computer. Although, by the way, you can have a pretty nice studio at home for like $300 these days. It's really not that expensive, but you can just use the free recorder app on your phone just to record that idea that you came up with. Maybe you came up with a chord progression. So record yourself playing that chord progression over and over just on the free recorder app on your phone for maybe two or three minutes. Now the reason we're recording it is because when we then write our melody, we don't even want to ask ourselves to be thinking about playing what we just wrote and improvising a melody. We want to do only one thing at the same time because then all of our brain power can be dedicated to doing that one thing really well. So instead of asking our brain to multitask by playing the part we just wrote, and improvising a new part in our melody, we just want to ask our brain to listen along to that music that you hear, you're not having to play it, and improvise a melody. And then from there, ideally you would record that and just listen back to your guitar part combined with your melody or whatever it is you've written so far, and then work on your lyrics. Because we don't wanna force ourselves to try to improvise a melody and improvise poetry at the same time, because those are two very different things, and probably both our melody and our lyrics would end up being much better if we separated those processes out. So be cognizant about what exactly you're doing all at the same time because we want to, as much as possible, restrict what we are writing to one very specific thing at a time. And finally, some friction in songwriting comes from just not really knowing what is the natural next best thing to work on. So maybe for your song, all you've come up with so far is a melody, and now you just sort of think, okay, now what? What do I do next? And that can cause a lot of friction where you're really frustrated and don't know where to go next with your song. And then oftentimes this results in songs getting abandoned, even though you certainly could have finished them if you just had a clearer path of what to do next. So when we talk about first steps, there's really a vertical way to look at next steps and a horizontal way to look at next steps. With vertical, we're talking about parts that are stacked on top of each other. So for example, your first verse is not just a first verse. It has a first verse chord progression, a first verse melody, and first verse lyrics. So if you've written lyrics for your first verse, you know that you also need to develop out the melody for your first verse and the chord progression for your first verse. Then we have the horizontal view on building out a song. So this would be something like you have a first verse and now you need a chorus, or you have a verse and a chorus, but you don't have a bridge yet. And then if you combine these two things together, of course, you get things like, okay, I have first verse lyrics and a Eventually, I need to have first
verse, verse, lyrics, chord progression, and melody, and a chorus, lyrics, chord progression, and melody, etc. So how do I go from just first verse lyrics to a full song? So first let's talk about how to most naturally develop a song vertically. An easy way to explain this is something I call the songwriter bridge principle. So if you were to imagine every song section as something like a combination of a chord progression, a melody, and lyrics, then we would have two pieces of land and then a bridge that connects those two pieces of land. One piece of land is your lyrics and the other piece of land is your chord progression. And then the bridge connecting the two is the melody. And the purpose of this image is that it gives you clarity on what you can work on next or what will be most easy to work on next. Let's start with the example of having lyrics. If you have lyrics, the natural next step is to then come up with a melody that goes with those lyrics. And then after that, once you have a melody, you can figure out the underlying chord progression that works with that melody. But what if you just have a chord progression or really any other musical part? Then the natural next step is to come up with a melody that works with that chord progression. And then once you have the melody, the natural next step is to figure out the lyrics that pair with the melody. And then finally, if you started your song with a melody, from here you can honestly go in either direction. They both are a pretty natural fit. If you have a melody, it's a pretty natural thing to figure out, okay, what are the lyrics that get paired with that melody? And if if you have a melody, it's a pretty natural fit to figure out what is an underlying chord progression that supports this melody. And in general, if you think about it, the lyrics and chord progression have no direct link. They are only linked together via the melody. The melody and chord progression is directly linked because the melody needs to work in context of the chord progression. The different chords in the chord progression somewhat dictate what your melody can be. This is why you can't just have any melody over any chord progression. And then in the other direction, your melody highly dictates what your lyrics can do. Because if your melody for a line is something like six notes, that sort of dictates that the syllables you would have in that line of lyrics would also be six syllables. But if you think about it, there's really no direct link between a chord progression and lyrics. You could maybe argue that generally they should have a similar vibe. So if your chord progression sounds dark, your lyrics should be dark. If you have a chord progression, you already have a tempo. So your lyrics need to be able to be sung in that tempo. But there's really not a direct link in a way that you have with a melody and a chord progression or a melody and lyrics. So basically, if you have lyrics, write melody next and then write chord progression. If you have a chord progression, write melody next and then write the lyrics. And if you started with melody, you could write the chord progression next or you could write the lyrics next and both would be a perfectly natural thing to do. Now let's talk about developing a song horizontally. This is figuring out what song section should we work on next. Really, I think there are two great options for this. One is chronological and the other is chorus first chronological. With chorus first chronological, the perspective is write the chorus as early on in the process as you can, and then from there do something like write the first verse, second verse, third verse, and bridge, or whatever the chronological order in your song is. The reason you might want to start with the chorus is the chorus is the central theme and central idea of your song, and everything else in your song is generally going to support that central idea. So it's much easier to write out three verses and a pre-chorus and a bridge when you know what the chorus they are all leading to has to say. Also, usually the chorus is the energy peak of your song. So you know whatever energy level your chorus is at, you probably want the energy level of every other song section to be lower. And then the other natural way to write is simply chronological. And when I say chronological, I don't necessarily mean in story order, I mean in song order. So start with your first verse, then your chorus, then your second verse, etc. Now, of course, you don't have to write in these orders. You could write the bridge first and write the chorus last if you wanted to, but I find the most natural thing to do is either to go more or less in chronological order or to do chorus first chronological where you try to write the chorus as soon as possible and then from there go verse one, verse two, etc. So be sure to take the time to be more intentional about your songwriting and writing in smaller, easier steps because honestly it will make the songwriting process way easier, way less overwhelming, but also in my experience it honestly makes songwriting faster too. I would compare this to something like the tortoise and the hare. The tortoise just makes steady progress. It's going slow.
slow, but because it's constantly making steady progress, it actually gets to the finish line before the hair, because the hair may be faster, but it gets sidetracked, it gets overwhelmed, it decides, ah, I can take a break, which is sort of similar to what happens when, yeah, sure, maybe you start your song really quickly because you came up with a chord progression and sang a melody at the same time and sang lyrics at the same time, but then you realize, I don't know where to go next with my song, I feel like the chord progression is not that good and the melody's not that good and the lyrics aren't that good. What on earth do I do? Do I just write crappy songs? Do I suck? And the answer to that question is no, you're probably just asking too much of yourself and just breaking things down into smaller steps, being the tortoise rather than the hare who's willing to just make one small step forward constantly instead of sprinting, but then maybe getting lost and not really knowing where you're going. Take the time to break down songwriting into small, completable steps that are going to be less overwhelming for you, and I promise it will make songwriting both more enjoyable for you and you will have more consistent, more reliable, good results. So hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, something else you'll likely find helpful is my free six-step lyric writing checklist because I talked about how breaking things into smaller steps makes everything easier. Lyrics is maybe the thing that that is most important for. Lyric writing can be so overwhelming if you just sit, stare at a blank page and basically say, improvise poetry. That is setting ourselves up for failure. I break lyric writing down into six much easier steps that will get better results. So be sure to check that out. My free gift to you. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. I'll talk to you in the next one.